Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to tackle gene engineering. So the first thing we need to do is go to Port Capul, which is the westernmost town, and come down to the southwest corner of this town, and you'll see this uh, gentleman to my left here, the scientist with glasses on here. And you talk to him, he will give you the quest, which I've already taken the quest, but um, he will also give you five monster balls. And uh, you need to throw these monster balls. They're basically pokeballs. So you need to throw these uh, monster balls at enemies and it will capture them. And I suggest to collect these monsters because it's very easy to kill these uh, monsters, right? If you hit them, I can one-shot anyone, right? Bam, he's dead. I can just one-shot them. So you need to get their health down to almost zero. Basically, get them down to where you can't see their red health bar any longer. Um, and you can do any animals here. So let me give you an example. Now this this is a good one, these guys, uh, because they, what is he called, a snail, I think? A uh, hermit crab. Because they can take a, a beating. Now, I have a mage character, so I'm going to melee him just because it won't one-shot kill him. Uh, and a couple more tips would be to get rid of any pets that are with you because they may one-shot something. Um, you can also take a skill called Knockout if you go to your skills. Let's see, oh, okay, that's the down key there, and I don't have it. Uh, but there's one called Knockout, and you can hit somebody, and it brings them down to, like, 1 HP. And that's an easy way to do it, but otherwise, Knockout will be a very useless skill, so I wouldn't take it. So I'm going to get him as low as I can and hopefully not kill him. Let's see. Oh, now I got him down. So you can see his red health bar is pretty much gone. And now I'm going to push T. Oh, not T. Excuse me. Shift T for throw. And I'm going to go to my monster ball, try to throw it. And I just missed. So let me try again. Got him. So, um, yeah, you may miss. I, I don't know what skill is throwing. But um, if he's not very close to you, you can miss. So now you can see, um, now I have my four monster balls empty. And my one monster ball with a hermit crap. So let's just see if I can collect a few more of these, and I'll be right back. Okay, I filled my five monster balls. Um, the easiest ones, like I said, are the hermit crabs. Those kind of reddish, uh, light red color guys, because um, I have to hit him like six times to kill him, and he does almost no damage. But I ended up with, um, let's see, I got a hand of the dead, two hermit crabs, three hermit crabs. I don't know why that one's not stacking, but uh, and a public performer. But anything will work, right? So I'm going to talk to him, and I will give it to him. So success. The experiment is a huge success. You've done a great job. To express my thanks, I'll let you use my gene splicing machine. Please take good care of it. All right. Uh, I need to eat something. I have a jerky. I'll eat that. All right. Oh, another thing. I died twice and uh because my character is kind of a glass mage and i was meleeing so uh twice i kind of got uh, surrounded and died and i dropped two field monster balls so i had to go buy more because the gene engineer won't give them to me so i went to the general store and vernus bought one there and then i had to go to general store in palmia and bought another there so if you do lose one they're pretty common in the stores so just go check uh, they don't have to be this. The, he gave me five level fives, but I ended up buying, I think, a level eight and a level seven. Uh, they don't have to be the same monster ball. He doesn't care. Just any monster ball filled with anything. All right, so now he dropped his gene. Um, what is it called? The oh, A freaky machine is what it's called. Um, so I'm going to pick this up, and uh, let's see. I can use it here, but I'm not going to. Now, this is 25 stones. It's pretty heavy. You should be okay if you don't have a somewhat filled inventory. But I still suggest... Oh, some quest rewards as well. I still suggest that you bring a scroll of return. And then you can just return directly to your house. Right, another thing that you should uh, make sure you do is make sure you have the gene engineer skill. So you can push C to pull up your character sheet. And then push the left or right arrows on your uh, numpad, which are 4 and 6. I'm going to push 6 and that gets me to my skills. And you can see I do not have Gene Engineer. So luckily, um, here in Port Capul, there's this guy. Oh, excuse me. Well, somewhere around here. Here he is. It's the brown guy here in mine. Uh, he is the trainer, and he will train. Oh, and you can, uh, 
he will teach the skill of gene engineer. So make sure to get that. And it's time to return home. So let's read my scroll of return in my home. So it takes a few turns, right? So let me just move around a little bit, pass some time. There we go. And I am home. So I'm going to drop this somewhere. I think I will have a gene engineer room maybe here. And I will drop my funky machine. Freaky machine, excuse me. Well, that was the hard part. Now I need to get some pets or NPCs or, you know, animals or something to gene engineer with. One of the first skills I like to get for my pet is the cooking skill. Because if you have, if your pet has the cooking skill and you go sleep somewhere, if you wake up in the morning, which is between dawn and noon, then any pets in your party with the cooking skill, and if they have a decent relationship with you, they will cook you breakfast. So it, that fills up everyone in your party all the way up to bloated, which is as full as you can be. And it increases everyone in the party's potential. And that potential increase scales with the cooking skill of your pet that, that cooks the food. So I usually add this to every pet that I will keep in my party, just in case one's dead or I switch something out later. At least I always have someone. So if I want the cooking skill, I can go to the wiki and I will post the wiki in the description, but if you go to the Gene Engineer wiki, uh, I would post it as a screenshot, but it's a very long list because there's tons of skills and pets. So if you go there, then you can, uh, I can see that I want the cooking skill. And it says that for cooking, ro both rogue wizards and farmers will give the cooking skill. And both rogue wizards and farmers are available from the Slave Master. So I'm at the Slave Master. And I see a rogue wizard after a long time of pushing never mind. So I will go ahead and purchase her. And now I have my rogue wizard. So the next step is to return home. All right, I have returned home. And let's have a look at this freaky machine. So I'm going to push T to use it. Oh, well, you can see here that I can't choose that top one, the Rogue Wizard, because she's level 10 and my Gene Engineer skill is too low. For me to perform uh, Gene Engineering on a creature, its level has to be less than or equal to my gen Gene Engineering skill plus 5. So if I had a, a something that had a, with like a level 30 creature, my Gene Engineering would need to be 25. All right, I raised my gene engineer skill. Uh, now I'm at 12. Uh, ways to raise that are uh, going to the trainers and you know training with them for platinum. Uh, also, you could just you know use characters for gene engineering, which are uh, level five or below. I guess six or below because it's uh, five plus one because uh, you start at level one. So I have mine now at 12. I am going to try again to use this machine, and I will start with my little girl. And then I will take the, again, if you look here, the, again, there's no body parts that I can receive from her because they're both humans, right? They both have two arms, two legs, you know, all that. Uh, but I can receive a cooking skill. So I'm going to push enter and see what happens. So really add this, uh, the wizard's gene to the little girl. And I will say yes. A nice little effect there. And now I can see that she has, where is it? Should have a cooking skill here. Cooking is level one and only fifty percent potential, but she has it. Um, let's see what that did. Alrighty, I have arrived at my farm. Uh, if you look down in the bottom left, you will see that I am sleepy, and the time is night. Right, so I just need to make sure that I wake up between dawn and noon. And if I do so, my pet will cook me a meal that will raise all of my potentials and anyone else in my party. So let's look. I, I should get a few random effects, hopefully positive, but that's not related to the cooking skill. All right. So you can see here, I see I have breakfast. So I come across a strange feast. It's similar to the random event, but this has uh, happened because of my little girl. I can choose to eat or not. Of course, I would like to eat, and it's not bad, and I am bloated. 
So her skill will raise, and the more it raises, the more likely I am to raise some potentials. Oh, and one other thing, um, for her to do, for my pet to cook for me, she needs to have uh, an impress value of 150 or more. Uh, so after you get to 150, it doesn't show up for some reason, but uh, you can see that uh, she's a fellow, so she needs to be fellow or above. So, uh, so she after she hit 150, that went. And the way to increase that, I'm gonna do a pet video uh, next, probably next week, and uh, I will go into more detail. But just let your pet kill stuff, and over time it will increase. And don't let her die. But there's other ways to increase it, but that's a whole video on its own. I should also mention that to capture a pet to do gene engineering on, you can use those monster balls. I can push T to choose a monster ball, and I'll choose a scorpion. And then he's now part of my, uh, now he's my pet, right? He'll fight with me just like any other pet. Uh, so here I bought a giraffe. I bought it from the uh, horse vendor over in Yawin, in the right side of town there, the east side of town. Right, so I will choose, I will push T to use my freaky machine. I will choose my giraffe, which is the one that, I, my pet that I want to keep. And then you can see here that if I uh, blend it with my scorpion, I can get it, uh, I can give hit a ring uh, on my body slot or uh, the skill of anatomy. Let's take a look. And I say, yes, I'm sure. And let's see. Giraffe inherited Scorpion's gene. Giraffe gained new ring. Giraffe learns new anatomy skill. You feel studious. Your gene engineer skill increases. So I got uh, both another slot and I got the uh, anatomy skill for my giraffe. Uh, so you can see how par powerful this can be for your pet when you have your main pet or pets if you're playing with like a party. Um, so you could take something like a, if you can find a mutant, you should always try to capture those because they have lots of slots. You can add more legs, more arms, uh, you know, ring slots, whatever you want to add, depending on what your pet is. Uh, if you go to the gene engineering wiki, which I have in the description, there's a huge list of donors and recipients and what body part and skill you can receive from them. And it really depends. I don't try to... I wouldn't guess because some things that would make sense, like maybe a spider has multiple legs, it won't give you necessarily your person another leg. So if you look on there, there's a, a pretty comprehensive list, but it doesn't have all. So you can check by just getting the... Uh, either you can make a, another character that has wizard mode and you can just um, kind of cheat your way to, to spawn the two animals you want, the donor and recipient. If it's not on this list or you can just um, practice it's a good way to get your skill up anyway the reason why you would want more body parts is each body part is an equip equipment slot right so if you had multiple uh, hands then you could equip multiple swords and uh, if you had uh, more legs you can move faster things like this uh, there is one thing that you should pay attention to uh, if you have too many body parts, then you get a feat, which is body is complicated, and that's a bad feat to have. It decreases your speed by 5% for every body part you have over 13. And the number of body parts for a human is 13. So you can't add anything to a human without taking that speed cut, which may be fine depending on what you want your character to do, but speed is a very important skill in this game. And the number of body parts, body parts that each creature spawns in with is entirely dependent on its race. So don't expect two different humanoids to be able to gain body parts from each other. And another thing, whenever you blend your uh, two genes together, you, can, you gain experience. So the way the experience works is it takes the donor's level plus the recipient's level plus one, and then all that divided by two. And it rounds it up but it can't be any higher than the donor's level. So basically, it gets you up to the donor's level, or at least very close to it. Other skills that you should consider giving to your pets are entirely dependent on you. Uh, a good one to get in Alona Plus is actually giving your pet the gene engineer skill, because that will allow them to collect materials. They only collect the materials when they defeat an enemy, 
and uh, they have to have an impression of more than 100, and you can check their impression by talking to them. And to receive those materials, if you just interact with them and do talk receive, then they will just hand over all the materials. Of course, some skills like if you wanted, if your character is melee, you would want them to maybe have dual dual wield or sword and shield or two-handed weapon, just whatever you want your build to be for your pet, just give them those skills. Also worth noting, if you want a shopkeeper, you need high charisma and high negotiation. So you would want to pull a negotiation skill and put that on your shopkeeper if they don't already have one. A quick way to level your gene engineer skill is to just bring your machine down to Durfee, plant it next to the slave market guy, and then just keep buying and uh, engineering pets, just random skills, whatever you can grab. And then sell that slave, sell the slaves back to the uh, slave market owner in Durfee. And another option would be going down to Yawen and combining the lame horses and then the and the cheap wild horses. Just blend them together and uh, whatever you can, just to raise your skills up. Scrolls of ally can be used as well to make someone your ally and then use your machine on them. Two NPCs to grab for just for gene engineering because you'll want them on all your pets is the farmers, which can be found in Yawen, and they don't seem to respawn. So there's a little bit of contention about that among the community. Some people say they do after a long period of time. Others say, no, I've waited years, they never respawn. So you might want to stick those into a ranch just to get a handful of them, uh, just to cover all your pets, maybe six or eight, which is more than you'll need for all your pets. And another would be the flying frog. If you just stick one of those in a ranch because they have swimming and fishing and they're, those are great skills to have on pets and they breed very quickly. So you could just, just use it for a few minutes, get a handful of them, and then you can swap that out with, swap out the ranch with another pet you want to breed. All of that is talked about in my uh, ranching guide. One last thing I want to talk about is after completing that gene engineer quest, if you bring, if you come down and talk to that scientist again and bring a pet with you, then you can open up a dialogue, tell them your companions will help with the experiment. Uh, choose your ally. I have a brown bear that I captured. All right, uh, one more thing that I think I should mention is if you come down to Port Kapool again and talk to that sci scientist, the biologist here, uh, he can reset the slots. He's, he does uh, experiments, just tell him, okay, uh, my companions will help you. Choose your companion and then give him a minute and he will reset the slots on your animal. Uh, one thing that you need to be careful of though, is if you have a mutant that has lots of extra limbs and you go down there, they will reset him back to the base mutant and he won't gain any more limbs. So don't do this with mutants. I can't think of any reason you would do that, do that anyway with any pet. I guess if you have, you know, like too many legs or something that takes their speed down by 5%, having more than the amount of slots they can have, more than 13. I guess you could do that, but I would just carefully engineer them so that they don't, that doesn't happen. And the last thing to mention is an Alona Plus thing. It, after you get to Act 2 and you open up Southern Tyrus, which is the, if you head to the very south of the map and go through the border town, uh, there's someone called Dr. Gavela, uh, G-A-V-E-L-A. -E if you talk to him, then he will add limbs to you. So at the cost of your life, which he'll take about 10% of the life per limb, he takes 10% per limb for your character and 1% per limb for pets. And that way, then he will give you an extra limb. But if you have a mutant that already has 16 slots, then he's unable to add any more slots. And that the limb that's added is random. And if you gain a limb, uh, through this doctor, then you can't use those uh, to donate to another pet with gene engineering. Uh, but you can bring him, bring that pet back down to the biologist here in Port Kapool, and he will reset your or your pet's you or your pet's body at uh, for one life, and that will put you back to the default amount of limbs. Okay, I think that's the uh, gist of gene engineering. It's basically just adding skills and body parts to your pets. Typically, the body parts would be from non-human pets that you want to keep with you for whatever reason. And uh, skills will be for all your pets. You want all of them to have all the skills that they can or will use. 
my next video I make is going to be all about pets and I will go into the pets that you should try to get and what skills to give them and what animals will give them that skills. I'll go into more detail about all of that. But with the information in this video, you should be able to be on your own with anything about gene engineering. So thanks for watching and look forward to my next video that will be about pets. Thanks for watching.